Welcome to Second City News. I'm Manas Dhuru. In this time of continued economic concern, most people making financial investment are erring on the side of caution. But one local entrepreneur has made an audacious move and invested in an unconventional street food business. Situated between the Bouldering Market and Chinatown, the place which has an original architecture may catch your eye. Hopefully, Mara will report. In a globalized city like Birmingham, where food chains keep emerging every day, it is nice to have a place like the Oko Yard. The Oko Yard is an independent street food business. Its unusual look allows much creativity to both its owner, but also to the local street food artists who come here to sell food everywhere. Made of scaffold holding and containers, the Oki Yard may not seem like a long-lasting street food installation. But despite its temporary look, the Oki Yard is here to stay for the next five years if everything goes well. Not only aesthetic, the structure gives the place the capacity to evolve. When everything's all opened out, it looks very industrial but also quite exciting, I think. And the idea behind this is that it's modular, so we can move these around, we can add more as we grow, and we can constantly develop. Whereas if we built this as a building, we've got what we've got. Inspired from Asian ochre markets and rune bars in Budapest, the structure of this new installation is unique in Birmingham. <laughs> street food markets, they've got to look very the part, um, they've got to show like a, a new kind of characteristic, they've got to make themselves different to that of a restaurant. And having these sort of um, so it's hipster looks of the, the wooden creations and the shipping containers is all really popular. If you are an architecture lover or simply a food lover, the Hoggy Yard is open from Tuesday to Friday in Chinatown. Have a look for yourself. When you talk about people of colour, what comes to your mind? According to Birmingham and Black Country, stand up to racism. Since the Brexit vote, there has been an increase in facial slurs and discrimination. Here's our reporter, Sana Mahmood, with more. Here today is part of the socialist movement fighting against racism. There is currently a thousand refugees from Calais who need shelter. This is here to raise awareness and promote an event called Confronting the Rise of Racism. Former Green Party Natalie Bennett and many others will be delivering speeches. We're here today like fighting racism because there's over a thousand child refugees in Calais and they're going to be they're in danger of being sex trafficked or going missing. So this government needs to let them in. They've let in about a hundred so far, but there's over a thousand children. So we're putting pressure on the government saying let all the children in. They argue that the right-wing media is using migrants, refugees and Muslims as scapegoats for an economic crisis and wars they didn't create. This year, 20,000 people from London, Glasgow and Cardiff took the streets to welcome refugees and mark Anti-Racism Day. They are planning on running another protest in March 2017 to stand up to racism. A local shop in Ecox Green has caught controversy with its unusual extension. Chevaline Lavalzi visited the site. This is the Baiwai supermarket with its new extension. Some local residents and businesses are describing this as an eyesore. They are concerned about the impact it will have on the local area. Well, to be fair, I thought they'd already get more because they've closed down because that's what it looks like. Um, I'm not happy about it because, as you can see, my business lies back. We made several complaints to the council who weren't interested at all. They came out on several occasions and just sort of did absolutely nothing. It really looks hideous. It's an extension that's had no planning permission, this much I know. Um, they say they're going to do something about it, but I don't know whether they will. Local councillor John O'Shea is keen to show residents that the problem is being taken seriously. Uh, quite a decent sized local business, and I'm happy to have them trade there and carry on trading there, but not to the detriment of other businesses locally. Oh, it's, it's clearly very untidy. It's, it's a bit of an eyesore for the, for the neighbourhood. So I'm not a, a big fan of it. Uh, but there's a possibility it may just be unfortunately legal to do. It's currently with planning. And it, it, they, they have the power to deal with it. Um, I'm, I'm not aware of any, any other department having relevant powers to deal with it. Uh, but it would be a planning matter. Chevaline Lavery, Second City News. And now on to some sports, but of the street kind. There's skate, there's a board, and there's you. 
can't get simpler than that, can it? Well, think again. Shalini Rai has more details. As you stand watching, skateboarding might appear deceptively simple, but there's a lot going on behind cruising on a piece of wood on a set of roller skates. It's a, it's a, it's a fun sport. It's, uh, it keeps you fit, keeps you healthy. Um, you meet nice people, you meet loads of variety of different people. Um, plus, there's loads of, it's, it's, it's growing in Birmingham now, it's starting to uh, pick up more in Birmingham, so, it's, so like, there's more skate areas to go skate, as well as more people are more um, likely to go, pick up a skateboard now and, and, ha and have a go, then pick up a bike, say, and just try, and try a bike. For some young people, it is an inexpensive way to engage themselves and can be practiced alone. Others pick up the board to get away from a humdrum existence. From among those I speak to for an interview request, there is a variety of responses. Friendly, indifferent, opaque. And hardly any girls can be seen among the 15-odd boarders. No one seems to know why, but a few hazard a guess. Boys for guys too, so females may not feel as comfortable. Um, so that's probably one of my reasonings, and I guess girls are as into like sports, so skateboarding would be, yeah, mm. not as normal for them. For most of these youngsters, skateboarding is the only break they can afford to get from a lonely, cloistered life. More often than not, their background is that of broken homes, abusive relationships battles with addiction and uncertain economic prospects. The next time you see a group of young people with skateboards, will it seem a little bit more nuanced? I'm sure it will. Shalini Rai with the reports. Finally, the weather is going to continue being overcast with top temperature of 13. The weekend should remain dry with some sunny spells and no rain. That's it for Second City News. Have a great weekend.